Now, let's shift gears to Botox. Uh, I don't know if you know that Botox is onobotulinum toxin A. Try saying that a few times, right? But Botox injections have an antidepressant effect. And part of the way it works is it's not just, I mean, people have said, yeah, of course, if you get Botox, you look younger, you're going to feel better. Well, that may be, <laughs> right? But it also has some chemical underpinnings. It's an acetylcholine release inhibitor. So it's decreasing acetylcholine, and there's evidence that anticholinergic agents have antidepressant effects. It's also a neuromuscular blocker, and it also increases norepinephrine release, partly through acet acetylcholine. There are two positive studies now for Botox for treating depression, believe it or not. The effects of one injection last up to 16 weeks. So talk about, a, talk about a new thing. You might soon, soon you might be starting IVs and giving Botox in your office. What do you think of that? <laughs> then we'll be like real doctors, right? <laughs> Exciting. Maybe we'll get, yeah. No, I won't say. All right. So obviously you inject in the forehead region. And as I said, statistically significant reduction in depressive symptoms versus placebo when you give it in the frown muscles. So let's talk about a little bit, well, why is that? Well, we know that increased cholinergic activity is associated with depression. Hyperactivity of the cholinergic system decreases activity in the norepinephrine system. So if we decrease acetylcholine, we might increase norepinephrine, and that we know is a good thing for depression. And anticholinergic agents have been associated with antidepressant effects, and guess what? We think these are mediated through downstream increases in neuroplasticity. We're coming back to that same common pathway. Un unfortunately, anticholinergic side effects limit the use of these agents commercially, as you see here. 